Hello, I'm Marta Gabriel. It's a great pleasure to be again with you at GAN. I have been there some years ago and it was a fantastic event, so it's a great pleasure to be here again. And uh, we are going to talk today about innovation and creativity, specifically in digital age. Uh, it's a really different scenario we live in and it changes how we innovate and how creativity affects innovation and also humanity. I am author of some books, several books, actually six books, and uh, the latest ones are these ones, uh, Marketing Digital Age. It has been a bestseller for some years now, 10 years, and we, we relaunched it in 2020 to talk a little bit more uh, about the digital changes we are uh, facing in this uh, times we are living in and also this one I have a role to this book specifically uh, to talk about the things we are going to talk here now about how technology has changing us so this is uh, you I and the robots and uh, where we are going to together and if you want to, to learn a little bit to know a little bit more about me uh, I have background in engineer marketing design arts I have executive education at MIT and also for the site pra practitioner at the Institute for the future and uh, also I teach I teach artificial intelligence in university here in Brazil and also at some business school here in Brazil as well. Uh, I, I, I'm a partner in some uh, startups. I have a company that delivers education uh, in Brazil and abroad and also I'm an international keynote speaker and more than 75 presentations abroad and also in Brazil I have already performed the five TED Talks, the DEX Talks and uh, it's great. Also, I am ambassador in Brazil for Geek Girls Latin America. Uh, this is an institution in Latin America to foster education in technology for girls. And I think it is very important so we can foster equality also if you have more girls and then women in technology in the future. And these are clients I have in Brazil and abro uh, abroad. So uh, as I, I get older, more clients in my life and it is, it's great. And uh, I'm going to start the presentation uh, with this quote uh, from Alvin Toffler. Uh, in the 70s, he talked already about uh, what is changing and uh, how can we see the future uh, when we pay attention on change. And uh, change is the process by which the future invades our lives. And uh, when we think about the future, the future is created into the present and when we are able to see the signs we can uh, see the scenarios that are likely to happen and then we can choose the scenarios that are better for us so in, in this sense we create the future we don't think about the future if you know how to see the scenarios you really really can choose the best ones and uh, this is why uh, people like Alvin Toffler, uh, like McLuhan, uh, like uh, Alan Turing, like uh, Bookmister Book Filler, uh, several great people from the past, from the past century, uh, they could see things that uh, happened and that are happening now, in, uh, so many decades ahead because they could see the signs. Uh, William Gibson has a quote also that says the future is al already here but it is not evenly distributed so we have several signs of what's going to happen and uh, when we see the signs what is hot on media today what uh, we see that uh, are something different uh, happening in our world in our lives and is changing everything so uh, news like this ones Last, a science thinks someone alive today will live to be 1,000. So other people say that the uh, hundreds will be the new 60s. People are living much more. And uh, when we see news like this, some people say, wow, this is great. And other people say, oh my gosh, this is complicated. So always we have this kind of reaction. Uh, some people think it's good. Some pe people think it's bad. And uh, this things that we really get surprised and we say something is happening in the world. These are the signs uh, futurists or foresight practitioners uh, looking for. Another news that uh, a lot of people was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Uh, a man in Japan uh, in the end of uh, 2018 
he married a hologram which has uh, artificial intelligence behind and also this man declares that he is very satisfied by being married with the hologram when we see news like this it's the same reaction some people say oh this is good or oh this is terrible so we are seeing this kind of news more and more and uh, more frequently uh, Elon Musk which is one of the big tech guys uh, nowadays he says that advanced AI will soon manipulate social media. Actually, it is happening already. We know that artificial intelligence can uh, learn signs and what is happening to give uh, different solutions or to, to give exactly what people want, so manipulate, if you will. And uh, it's happening already. So people say, oh, uh, it's good or, or it's bad or we need to pay attention or what is happening. Uh, when uh, probably all of you have seen the social dilemma, uh, this is uh, a documentary that Netflix uh, aired uh, some months ago and uh, a lot of people were like oh there is manipulation there is our data is very important it is actually happening for a long time now uh, the documentary says a little bit about this now but it is happening for years or maybe decades uh, not it's not a, a thing that is only happy now. The signs were there already, but some people couldn't see. So we have this relationship with technology that is uh, something like between hating and loving it. All the time we go from one side to another. As humanity, we have been doing this for a long time now. And so Arthur Clarke, which is a great thinker from the last century uh, also, he used to say, that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic because when technology arrives and you don't understand really what it's doing but you get amazed about it, what it's doing you get fascinated but on the other hand as I said some people don't like it very much and we know about the Luddites and also much much uh, before the Luddites. There were several uh, movements when technology comes and change lives and the people get a little bit stressed and then you get some kind of re reactions like that. So when we see this a uh, little bit more uh, closer, a, a little bit closer than uh, Luddites and also uh, centuries ago, uh, this is the hype cycle. Gartner every year uh, has a study uh, for artificial intelligence, for marketing, advertising, where uh, they use this method uh, that is uh, how you uh, see the technologies that are uh, going to be uh, in our lives in the next years. Uh, some of them, uh, the newest or the more hype ones, are here in this uh, line. And then, uh, for example, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, they started here and then everybody thinks that this is going to be the only solution for everything and then you get uh, very euphoric about that and then you realize that no technology can do anything and can uh, be uh, always good or always uh, right for everything and then you go to the disappointment until you get a dis deception point and then when you are there you think okay it's not good for everything but maybe it's good for some things and then you start using technology the way it should be used and then you go to a productivity plateau where it finds its way in our world any technology and innovation uh, goes through this hype cycle. This is a great methodology that uh, Gartner uses for several years now. And every year I follow that. So if yeah, I follow that. So if you check this for several other areas, you're going to see that we always have euphoria, we have deception, and then we have productivity. So the scenarios that are more likely to happen, they never are the euphoric ones, or the dystopic ones, but usually uh, they are in the middle, they are something in between these things. So when we look at the past and how technology has uh, evolving in, in our lives, there are two main uh, errors that humanity uh, is uh, re re 
uh, again and again <laughs> doing, uh, we can say individuals sometimes do, do that, that the first one is you uh, don't understand technology that's coming and uh, then you deny that and the, the second thing is you deny and don't use it properly. So individuals along the history that were able to see which technologies were changing things and then they embraced this for the next step, they, they were the ones that changed the world and they get advantage in this and change. And, and sometimes they made a, a, a big difference in, in our lives because they knew how to go with along with technology. So technology is never neutral, never. Uh, always it brings good things and bad things. Uh, and, that, and in this sense, I invite you to think a little bit, if you think that one specific technology brings only good things, uh, you are really biased by that. Uh, and if you can see one good thing and one bad thing, uh, you are narrow, although you are less biased. And uh, if you see only one bad thing, you are biased as well. So if you see one good thing, one bad thing, you are narrow. If you see three good things and three bad things that it can bring it to us, you are a broader vision and then you can really see what probably is going to happen. But I really invite you to think about, always to think about five scenarios. Uh, good and bad when any technology comes in our lives or anything in our lives. Uh, all the things bring good things and bad things. So when we are able to see that or, start, or stop a little bit to think about that, then we really start to see the future and the, the futures we want with that technologies. So when we think about the human evolution, is intertwined with the technology evolution from the beginning of our history. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but even talking is a technology we develop, hacking the respiratory system and the digestive system, and then we start talking. And it was a huge uh, advantage for humanity comparing to any other species uh, that weren't able to do that. So technology has helped us to understand ourselves, where we are in the universe. When we use a telescope, we can see further. Or our evolution, we have technology to, to understand uh, the timing of each thing at fossil that we find uh, uh, around the world. So we can understand evolution. Also, we can see inside us, we can see and in, in understand our biology. And also, we are starting to figure out our intelligence, which is very complex and very challenging. But we, with the help of technology, we are going together and actually, actually we are mixing with technology to understand and develop our intelligence since we start our evolution. Uh, we have a special time when you talk about the evolution and the speed of uh, evolution. Uh, Technology has changed the way uh, human um, uh, evolve, and we have a great acceleration, uh, especially specifically in 1950s. If you see the curve for several things here, uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, we, we always uh, say that it's the Ebel from the exponential curve. Technology has been accelerated from the beginning of the times, but when we are in the beginning of the exponential curve, it's very, very slow, 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 until you reach the Ebel. And uh, this Ebel probably is 1950s, after the Second uh, Great War, uh, World War, actually. And uh, this war uh, accelerated a lot of collaboration in the world, and then we saw a very, very fast speed of innovation happening, and uh, it started to change completely the way uh, the years ahead were uh, uh, developing. Uh, just for you to, to see how we are now, this is me, uh, last year in Hanover uh, Mess in, in Germany. This is the uh, place where the industry 4.0 was born, and the day I'm playing uh, I don't know the name of this in English, but in Portuguese, this is <laughs> ping pong or tennis table, I think. And uh, with a robot. And uh, why do they put a robot to play with us? To show how flexible, fast, agile the robots are now. 
precise and how they can predict because when we, we play uh, ping pong or uh, tennis table you need to predict where the ball is going to go and uh, this is how robots are being used today and uh, a lot of people don't know they can be that good actually i won but i won because i just played for three minutes if i was playing more i would never win again <laughs> never so this is another example in the end of last year i was in silicon valley and bought a universal translator and um, I, take, I took this translator for me in my vacation. In the beginning of the year, I went to Laos, Myanmar, and uh, Hong Kong. And I was thinking, okay, it's easy to translate it from English to Portuguese or Spanish. But to Birmanese, which is the language there, it's a little bit more complicated. And then uh, I, I, I took the translator with me. It doesn't even require a SIM card. It used a GPS. And then I was able to translate completely sentences and completely, really, uh, in anywhere, in any, any language with a lot of facility. So this is the... Ele vai falar apertando esse botão, depois eu falo apertando esse botão, que é em português. Robert, so say something. You just press yes. this button, wait for this, the beep. This one, this one? Yes, and you wait for the beep, and then you say something. Number go, ka chenoro mnyama re dwe, kang kaun chen number pshepare, number go. Lucky night. Assim. Agora ele está traduzindo, escrevendo em manês. O nono dia do nono mês é o número da sorte para nós birmaneses. So you see that it works works very well, and uh, it's in Portuguese, but it could be translated from English or to, uh, to any other language. And uh, this is the scenario we are going to have uh, uh, earplug that translates or contact lenses that translates as well. So this is the situation we are. So human beings are techno species. We have evolved with the technology, and uh, a very important thing is we form an intelligent system. Uh, intelligent system with technology. So when you think about human and technology from the beginning of the times, we are a system that work together. So when one part changes, it changes the other also. So we cannot be the same after we uh, see or face or suffer a technology change. Usually we cause the technology change and then the technology cause the changes in humanity, in humanity. So even if you don't use technology, you probably are going to be affected, affected by these changes that technology causes. So after a technology change, uh, human beings change again and then we change technology again. So the more we optimize the system, the more we increase its intelligence. And we have been doing this from the beginning of the time. So how do we do that? Using the maximum potential of each part. And the one example I love to always think about is the hand. Uh, before we had any tools, we used to dig with our hands, bare hands. And uh, after we developed a tour, have developed uh, a tour, a tool, uh, like uh, a chef or a shovel or something like this, uh, we understand that the person who digs only with the bare hands will never ever be as good as the one that has the tool. And also, after having a tool, we understand that if we change the size, uh, if you, we change uh, some characteristics, it can, it can be better and then it changes us again and the, this is our story history we are doing this from the beginning of the time the technology changes we change we change the technology change and then we go uh, increasing the uh, intelligence of the system as we are evolving so technology he shapes our reality uh, if if we think about the reality we are living now today we think about things that are unthinkable <laughs> uh, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. We fly, we now talk anywhere, we can be apart and be together. So uh, our reality is completely dif different from 200 years ago. Our civilization is completely different. It is going 
to continue, continuing to be changed and the different from, uh, from now to the future. So how it's going to happen? Uh, we have an estimate uh, several uh, institutes for, for future and research and universities and uh, consultant uh, uh, companies. Uh, there is uh, expectation that we are going to reach the level of our, uh, super intelligence about uh, around 2006, it's like 40 years from now. In this way, from now to 2060, uh, we are going to see the machines uh, getting our level of intelligence. And when we are in this journey, we need to be uh, mixing with them because, as uh, remembering, we form an intel intelligent system. When technology changes, we need to change, and then it, it's go on, you know. So when we arrive here, it doesn't matter if it is really 2060 or 70 or 2050, but uh, somewhere in the next decades, we are going to reach the super intelligence, which uh, we call when it arrives, we are going to leave it the. Uh, technological um, singularity uh, where we don't know uh, how the laws of physics and uh, how humanity will be uh, but it will be completely different than we have now so what I'm saying we uh, need to keep it moving and keep reshaping the system so that we can arrive there and in a very good uh, situation so anything that can be digitalized and automated will be we have been done this from the beginning of the times. Anything that gets fa faster, better, uh, costs uh, sh cheaper or anything like this, we adopt that. So it's going to continue happening and the humans to be relevant in this scenario, continue being relevant, we need to do the things in which we are better than machines. And which things are that? We need to understand what the machine does better than us and then we need to do the things machine doesn't do. Uh, so uh, uh, when we think about uh, an example, this is uh, from MIT, and uh, they have a study that shows that um, readings, uh, radiology scans readings, machine learning can do in one day the same amount that a human would take a lifetime to be able to read. So it's much faster than us, but when you see the level of error or error level, uh, humans uh, have a 3.5 error for error for the uh, percentage for detecting cancer, uh, while machine learning has a 7.5 percentage of error for detecting cancer. So it's almost the double. But when they work together, when humans use machine learning to trial and uh, do some uh, stuff and to amplify their work, the error is much less than uh, any of them. Humans are machi machines, so it's just a half percent uh, error for detecting cancer. We are seeing that people who are understand that are using that, robot advisors uh, are being more and more used in several areas, especially when we, fi uh, when, when we think about uh, uh, it, uh, uh, traffic uh, nowadays we are seeing Waze or something uh, other uh, apps that do the same so we can be faster and much more uh, efficient in the uh, moving in the cities financial systems in medicine and health and uh, agribusiness in several areas we are seeing this happening again in security we are uh, in an area that we are being more and more connected and when we are more connected, we are also more vulnerable. And when you use machine learning together with humans, we have a much more efficient, efficient in detecting malicious attacks. So I used to say that an average person empowered by technology, the right technology, becomes better than the best human expert working without technology. And uh, at last example in this scenario, uh, imagine I'm arrived in a big city in the world, any big city I don't know, and uh, when I arrive there and I have never been there, uh, who uh, creates or makes the best route? I being very average person, I don't know anything about the city, but I'm using a Waze or an, a traffic uh, app, or a very expert person like a tax cabbie, 
a, 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 a driver, a tax cab driver, that knows everything about that city, but doesn't use any technology to help him. What happens is I'm going to be much better, even, uh, even if I don't know anything in that city. So one human, when use uh, uh, the right technology, can be much, much, much more powerful than we are when we don't use technology. So in this sense, where are we going to? What, uh, what is the future of the work? So as we automate tax tasks with technology, we need to improve our human expertise in tasks that cannot be automated. So let's see what one do and the other do, and then we can together uh, increase the intelligence of the systems the system and then when we see now this is for today this uh, this is a, 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 a paper uh, an article i wrote for gartner last year and uh, when we compare artificial intelligence and human intelligence in, in the scenario we are now in the level we are now artificial intelligence can perform one thing at once uh, humans, we can do three, four things. For example, artificial intelligence is very good for uh, playing chess. Uh, it can be better than a human, but it only does that, uh, play chess. A uh, human can play chess, can drive a car, can see things, can walk, can do much more things. So we are more uh, broader and uh, in, in wider in, in terms of things we can do. Also, uh, artificial intelligence is very good for automation. We are good for autonomy. They are good for volume. We can never process uh, speed and volume of data as they do. But we are very good for ambiguity, for critical thinking, which is the number one, number one uh, ability we have to, to have and to develop to navigate the future. The other thing they have very, very good is reason. We have emotion. It is what makes us humans. Uh, emotion is in the root of our decisions. So when we see that, everything that artificial intelligence is stronger than us, let them and use them. And uh, above that, on top of that, put the human abilities where we are better than them. So when we talk about intuition, what is intuition? Intuition is a combination of data that you have it but you don't know that you have it and then you come up with a solution or with a vision but in the end it is data connected to data and some processing that comes up with the solution who is better on that machines machines today can beat human intuition because they can process much more signs and uh, data and uh, much fa faster than us and then they have better uh, solutions creativity uh, a lot of people say that creativity is for humans. Uh, this is our great difference from machines. It's not. I'm sorry, but it's not. Uh, when we think about creativity, creativity is the connection of a huge volume of data. And then you connect in several ways to see how new things can help you to solve in better ways the problems we have. Who does this better? <laughs> humans? or machines volume and speeds for them uh, not for us so they are the machines are making uh, movie trailers they are making music they are making art they are making food like a chef and they are doing it very very well so creativity is important for human but if you don't connect and use it, the machine creativity to amplify yours you are losing <laughs> you cannot be in the same level you cannot beat them so one example of that is AlphaGo Zero. AlphaGo Zero today is a system that can beat any any human in chess and Go, and uh, the the system acquires superhuman performance in only 70 hours playing, and uh, it plays uh, learning from the manual, the guide, the rules of the the, the game, and it beats uh, the system that beats human the first system that beat the humans by 100 uh, 100 oh, oh. Uh, it means this is a, a, a level that we cannot achieve ever but we can use that for solve several problems we have in humanity very complex problems and we can be on top of that with critical thinking this is the number one 
uh, ability we have to have so we can see what we have to do use the technology that is good for that and then we apply our abilities human abilities and then we can move as humanity continuing being humans uh, in this way another example is a robot artist this uh, robot has exhibition in london this is a thing that a lot of artists, human artists, has never have never achieved. So this is the way we are uh, we are developing. So machines are for creativity, connectivity. One machine learns something, the other machine, if it is the same kind of machine, uh, learns automatically. You can transmit it from one to another. It, don't, it doesn't happen with humans. I can learn a lot of things. Another human that is the same configuration as me cannot learn automatically. You have a, a learning curve. So they are much better for connecting. They are much better for updating. Uh, they, uh, you can see this in your smartphone. You have updating every day <laughs> from every system. We cannot update ourselves as fast and as easily as machines do. So if it is for machines what is left for us to be human we should be human and then we can use the machines and then what is to be human humans uh, are soft skills <laughs> and to be human is to have a lot of soft skills which are human skills this is in the brain not in muscles anymore so when we think about the future why is everybody th saying that the most important skills are human skills because as a machine is automate all the technical things and all the other things human skills are what differentiate us uh, from them so the other thing is uh, what we have that make us human emotion emotion is something that machines at least for 40 years probably are not going to develop so it's a human thing and these three three things emotion ethics and empathy is what make us human and different from machines for several decades so this is where we uh, unbalance the game and we can be better technology levels everything uh, what makes us different is exactly the humanity we put uh, on top of that so uh, this is why we are talking uh, uh, so much in business in marketing about experience uh, purpose to be higher something to achieve something higher than the things that usually are around us because this is what makes us human and make the difference for for us to develop uh, our humanity and continue being human so the other thing is a critical thing i have uh, said already so as we are uh, going uh, further uh, each one of us is a different system uh, the world is so complex now uh, for me i have been looking for the technologies that make my system more intelligent uh, each one of you uh, needs need to search and uh, to find out which technologies are the ones you have to have to increase uh, the performance of your intelligence system so this is a work that uh, each one of us need to do as person people individual or companies organization as groups because this is the way we can have a better future and in order to do that when you find a new technology or the one that is better for you and they exchange you and then you keep uh, adding value to the system you are innovating so innovation and creativity in digital age uh, is something that depends on this system of human and technology being continuous continuously uh, being developed and tuned so we can reach a better future uh, just for uh, see how it important it is a lot of companies and institutions organizations nowadays are focusing on uh, applying uh, money or resources only on technology but if you don't have the right talents and this is a study from MIT if you don't have the, the right talent to do that to operate that put human uh, resources uh, on top of that you cannot have uh, good res uh, results so you are wasting money time and resources and you are not going anywhere so uh, for closing 
this is a quote I say all the time. I come up with that in the book, You, uh, I and the Robots. And uh, if you don't want to be replaced by a robot, don't be one. Be human and as human, use the most you can from technology so you can increase the system continually, continuously and then inno innovate continuously and then we can have a better future. So that's it. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, I wish you all happiness, health and a very, very good life. Thank you.